three years ago, an earthquake and subsequent tsunami crippled the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan. A meltdown of astronomical proportions began. However, the true scale of the disaster remains largely unknown. But based on what we do know, things look bleak, especially for those who rushed to help when the crisis began. That's certainly the case for the 5,000 sailors aboard the USS Ronald Reagan who were sent to help with the cleanup. And as they were floating offshore, they weren't given any sort of preventative treatment or iodine tablets until after they left Japan 80 days later. In fact, they weren't even told that there was a nuclear meltdown for an entire month, all the while dosing themselves daily with radioactive water. Sailors on board were told to sign away their liability, and for good reason. Over 100 of them have since developed radiation sickness and cancer. Which brings me to the U.S. Pacific Coast. Conflicting reports either paint a rosy picture or that we're in big trouble, not to mention the slew of disinformation coming from TEPCO and Japan's government. So to help me sort through the madness, I was joined earlier by Mimi German with Radcast.org. I first asked her what sources of information we can trust to know the true scope of this disaster. It's been very difficult as of late with finding materials that you can trust. Um, there has been a disinformation campaign both from, I think, obviously TEPCO and the Japanese government with its secrecy law coming in, which has made things extremely difficult, down to, um, you know, who's giving us correct information on the ground. And I'm one of those people on the ground, and I have to look at that as well. So the people that I trust are primarily at this point citizens who have monitors. I do trust us. Uh, we have a, we've made an effort to create a monitoring team of people across the United States, across North America, Canada, um, uh, Europe, everywhere, South America, to read what's coming in in the air and try to detect as best we can what's happening in the ocean and what's coming down in fallout. So that, that's where I go. I go to the people first. Uh, thank goodness for that, uh, Mimi. Before we get into the actual radiation levels and what Redcast is doing, um, let's talk really quickly about this latest news about the mysterious smoke. I mean, radiation levels at Fukushima are too high for any human to enter without receiving, obviously, a dangerously high dose. So when all these people are saying that this mysterious steam that's been rising from Reactor 3 is perfectly normal without being able to check firsthand, I mean, how can we know for sure? One of the things that is interesting when you've been following this as long as I have and the people who uh, have been following this who are my teachers longer than I've been following, they, they tell me that um, there's been steam, there, there's been smoke, there's been all kinds of events going on since the beginning of 311. So this isn't new. It, it might be a new occurrence for the moment, but there's mm -hmm. nothing new about it as far as steam off, um, you know, the melt throughs are occurring and wherever that corium is, we're getting intensive heat. And I'm not a nuclear engineer, so I, I don't profess at all to know anything scientifically about what's going on there from that perspective. What I do know is that watching the readings that come in in the air to the west coast, which is where I am, I can tell that there are things happening there. Mm -hmm. And people I know who have meters can tell that things are happening here as well. And your organization, radcast.org, monitors the radiation levels across the U.S., as you were just mentioning. Talk about your findings on the Pacific Coast. Our findings within the last year have gone up, our averages have gone up slightly. And that's something to look at. We are aware of what our quote unquote normal background numbers were before and around 311. Some people have been monitoring the air for a really long time and, and we've all been in touch with each other and it's really important to get that backlog of data. Um, for the most part, we can only make inferences from pre-311, but we do have some sound data about that as well. But since uh, 2012, when I started monitoring, I know that our averages here in Oregon have gone up about 40 to 45 percent in averages. So we're seeing something going on. And I think, um, oh yeah, I, I just wanted to interject really quickly. I mean, I think the obvious concern is seafood coming from the Pacific. Uh, ingesting radionuclides from Fukushima could be deadly. Just today, though, Scientific American published an article saying that, quote, any radionuclides from Fukushima have been diluted by the vastness of the Pacific. The extra radionuclides from Fukushima are simply not enough to create a dose large enough to cause any human health effects. Mimi, is it possible that the threat to the U.S. coast is being blown out of proportion? 
I don't think it's being blown out of proportion at all. I think at times we might get some readings from people that are incorrect, but overall when you think about radionuclides going into somebody's body, what we know is they're never okay. They can cause cancer and you can't get rid of them once they enter your body. So because of the way that bioaccumulation works in the food chain, um, we know now that the seaweed has been affected since a, a while ago now, about a year and a half we've had those findings, um, if not longer. We know that the tuna has been affected. We know that the herring has been affected. And we know in Canada on the West Coast, in Vancouver, uh, lots of sources have been affected. So when we hear that, we have to look at everything in between. And then we have to look at who's testing. And not for the accuracy of the test, but for the fact of is anyone testing? How often are they testing? The EPA shuts down its testing whenever they feel like. Um, we can't get significant readings from them many times whenever there's, in fact, when Building 3 happened uh, recently, this recent steam off, we cannot find uh, EPA readings around that time. So what I'm saying is we need to know that, that governments are testing this, that groups like NOAA are testing this constantly so that we can get accuracy. And until we get accuracy um, and we allow some time for the bioaccumulation to read out in greater numbers, I can only advise people to not eat the fish mm -hmm. from the ocean. Radcast is also connected with independent monitors in Japan. What have you learned from them and how does it differ from the reports we're hearing on the media? Well, fortunately, um, SafeCast created a monitoring system for the Japanese people immediately after Fukushima happened. And because of that monitoring system, the citizens monitoring what was going on with their meters, we knew that what they were saying and what TEPCO was saying were two different stories. Uh, TEPCO thought that they could continue to lie to us about their findings while we were seeing in video on YouTube uh, results from the citizens' meters saying that their readings are so high, they're finding particles in Tokyo, they probably, they're, I'm sure their water is affected, their drinking water, due to the aquifer that's right beneath Fukushima Daiichi. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm devastated that the Japanese government isn't doing more to protect their people. And I'm also devastated that we have so many people, not just on the West Coast in the United States, but all over North America, who are, um, who, who have been hit, especially in the beginning, with particles in the fallout. And we know that through Arnie Gunderson at Fairwinds, through his testing, and we know that through numerous testings, in fact, from the, the Canadian government, um, they have many reports out talking about the levels of uh, xenon that they found, which comes from fission. Um, and Arnie found particles of plutonium. And he said that every individual in Seattle and he later said in Portland as well, was receiving about 10 hot particles a day during a, maybe it was uh, two or three weeks or so right after Fukushima happened when he did his testing. When you ingest particles, they don't go away. They will affect your DNA. Well, I'm sure Congress is on the case. <laughs> Radcast is also presenting its findings to members of Congress. How are they responding, Mimi? We have gone to Senator Wyden's office numerous times over the last year and a half to report to them what it is that we're finding. And um, the line is, yes, Senator Wyden's very concerned. Of course, you know he went to Fukushima. Yes, we know that. And we expected more from Senator Wyden. And I feel good about saying this, that Senator Wyden needs to, because he went to Fukushima, because he saw the devastation, he needs to use his power in the Senate and make people pay attention and get that international community together to get over to Japan and deal with the situation. We still don't have an international team over there. Unbelievable. Almost three Unbelievable. years later. <laughs> right. Like I said, I mean, this is the most important issue going on in the world. Everyone should stop what they're doing, work together. What can the average person do? Because I, I think, I mean, I'm feeling really helpless. You telling me this, I'm from California, my family's there. I mean, what can we do to combat this? Any advice? I think that we have to look at mitigation and, and we can't get rid of the fallout. We can't get rid of what's happening at Fukushima. No one can, that's the problem with Fukushima. Uh, it's going to be a perpetual disaster to us um, everywhere on the planet for, you know, thousands of years to come. 
So what we can do is if we got monitors, for instance, we can do our own testing in our own area. You can depend on your own monitor, assuming it's a good monitor. And you can see, look, you know, we're getting a little bit of hot rain today and there's a little bit of radiation in the rain. And even the slightest amount of radiation that we see above our background is something to look at. And you get to make a choice. Do I want my kids to go play soccer today in the rain or do I want them to come home no matter how disappointed they are? Do I want to go take that hike in the rain? What about my animals? Um, Radcast is working at sourcing out really good food supplies so that you can go and know that these vitamins have been tested, the ingredients that went into them. Um, food sources, uh, green products, things like that will only have sources on RADCAST that are tested specifically for radionuclides. Thank you so much. I know that you guys have radiation maps as well that you're providing. Everyone go to RADCAST.org, check it out. Thank you so much. Mimi Gurman, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me.